All right, we're going to talk about mortar. Today I'm going to do it from the audience. A different perspective. So what you see on stage is you see three different opportunities to go ahead with, with different types of mortars. You see Scott over here on your left. Scott, say hi to everybody. You see Scott in the middle. Don't get confused. One's big Scott, one's not big Scott. And you see Mike on the right. Mike is using a cementitious product. Now, this is designed for large, thin tile panels. I have two options. If that thin tile panel is not in a wet area, is not in an exposed area like outside, um, I can use what, what Scott is doing over here on the left, GPT. It's a ready-to-use product. I open the bucket up. I don't have to mix anything. There's no dust generated. It's an occupied building. I don't want to go ahead and make the noise of the drill, run an extension cord across a hallway with the potential for someone to trip, have to have water, have to measure the water because we know guys measure water, not. We know most guys don't read instructions. By the way, on that note, my products come in four languages, English, Spanish, French, and man pictures. Because we know no matter what language you speak or read, you won't read or speak those languages, but you will, as a man, look at the little pictures. So look at the little pictures, find out if it calls for how many quarts of water. Just for the men in the audience, if it calls for six quarts of water, how, how many quarts are in a gallon? Okay, so it's four quarts in a gallon, so six quarts of water would be a gallon and a half. Very good, guys. I'm very proud of you right now. You should give yourselves a hand. Very good. Listen, you, somebody has a, an ability or a unit to measure. You need to measure the water. The science is in these products. is in the bag. It's not, in, it's not the days of the installer throwing a little bit more cement in there, a little bit of lime. I'm going to throw some sand. Those days are gone. Those are my grandfather's days. They're behind us. It's all pre-mixed in a bag. It's cooking 101. Two scoops of flour, not three, not one, two. A cup of water. You follow the instructions. Mike has a cementitious product for thin tiles. Now the advantage to that is, if I'm gonna take these large gauge porcelain tiles, or I like to call them thin tiles, if I'm gonna take these thin tiles, put it in a wet area, a fountain, a jacuzzi, a steam shower, um, a swimming pool locker room, anything like that, I want to go cementitious. I want to go with cement. But if I'm going to put it in a decorative area, a bank lobby, um, a hotel lobby, something like that. By the way, the initial reason for thin tiles was that they didn't want to do the demo. And so they could go ahead and take these large panels of porcelain and just go ahead and go right over top what was already existing. And so we're talking bank lobbies. We're talking about all these different areas. And that's where GPT comes in. GPT comes in a bucket. You can see it right there. And a gauge porcelain tile, by the way, GPT. You, know, you like that marketing? Did a good job there. Um, and you just pull it out of the bucket, trowel it just onto the back of the tile. That's the other thing with the gauge porcelain tiles. If I'm going to go with a cementitious product, I actually, the reason for it is, is the weight. I actually have to go ahead and put it on the back of the tile and on the wall. So the weight that I was saving on the thickness of the tile, I just gained by putting twice as much mortar. I don't quite understand that, but that's just the way, those are the specifications right now. So with a ready-to-use product like GPT, I just put it on the back of the tile, I wet the wall. It is moisture activated. I want you to think about wood flooring adhesive. There's polyurethanes and there's modified silenes. This is a modified silene. It's a cousin of modified silenes. It's moisture activated. So in a place like South Florida, where I come from, I probably don't need to put anything on the wall. I have enough moisture in the air. I I need about 30 to 40 percent relative humidity to get it to act. But in a drier climate like here, I might need to help it along. So I mist the wall, the dry, the, the, the wall that I'm putting it on, with water first. Then I set my tile. 
Mike is going to go ahead and make sure he combs the ridges in the exact same direction. Now, what's important here, stop right there, Mike, for you. Now you're making me get up. Um, is Mike comb these in the shortest direction of the tile because we're going to have to squeeze the air that develops in these little grooves right here out. If I went this way, I would have to work that air the length of the tile. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's going to be my best option. Go ahead, buddy. Ben, yes, ma'am. So that's first off. The, the answer to your question is yes. With thin tiles now, those surfaces need to be flat. Whereas before, we could cheat it with mud, although we weren't supposed to, but we did all the time. Right now, there's no more cheating. That tile is too thin, and it'll actually bend and bow and follow the follow the wall. Especially in a cementitious product, as it dries or cures, it's going to go ahead and pull and draw into the wall. So now more than ever, surface prep is important. By the way, we skipped over something. We skipped over what Scott did right here. And what Scott did right here was he used our new Caraflex Super in that big giant super bag right there. No, it's just a prop. Caraflex Super is new technology from Europe. And what it allows us to do is it allows the mortar to slide and wet across the back of the tile. Scott didn't beat this tile in. He didn't do anything other than set the tile, move it with his hands. And he's already at 95, 98% coverage with the tile. And the reason is that that mortar, that super, is flexing and flowing across the back of, the, of that tile. The other thing, Caraflex Super meets ANSI 118.15. And don't get, it, don't get this wrong at all. ANSI 118.15 is huge. The difference is the heat aging test that goes in with that. That's going to tell you that this product can withstand extreme temperatures indoors and outdoors, and because of the amount of latex and flexibility built into the product, it's not going to crack or debond. So you're going to hear other people say, our product mostly meets ANSI 118.15. That's like saying I'm mostly tall. I'm not. Okay. I'm not mostly tall. I've accepted that. You can't mostly meet a standard. You meet the standard or you don't meet the standard. There's no wordsmithing. I meet all of the specifications except one. You don't meet then. That's like saying you needed to get 100 on the test. I got a 99. You failed. You failed. You didn't get 100. That was the standard. So you either meet the standard, don't listen to any other jargon when somebody talks to you about a product that meets ANSI 118.15. Does it meet the product? There's only two answers, yes or no. Anything, as my friend used to tell me, anything other than a yes is a no. Well, that's a no. This meets the standard. MaPay makes 10 products, 10 products that meet ANSI 118.15. 10. Stop on by the booth. We'll run them down for you. If you don't need that, there's a, there's a Caraflex Plus. And there's a base grade, Caraflex SG, standard grade. There's also a Caraflex Rapid. The advantage is Caraflex has more flexibility built into the product. That's, that's really where this whole thing comes to, comes to fruition. And with these larger, thinner tiles, I need all of that support on the back of the tile. It's kind of like having a son who's a musician. It needs a lot of support. I have two sons. One's a musician and one's not. Um, it needs a lot of support. Okay? And that's where this product comes into play. Notice, too, there was no hammering or beating. So, we have a ready-to-use product in a bucket. I open it up. No mixing. No cords. No smells. I can use it in occupied spaces. GPT. I'm going to go outside, or I'm going in a steam shower, I'm going in a wet environment, I'm going, I'm going in any type of environment other than wet, moist, damp, anything like that, then I want to use a cementitious product. This was S2 mortar, ultralight S2. It's lightweight, it uses a hollow sphere glass bead, it was specifically designed for thin tile. 
I want to set a tile on a floor, I want flexibility, I want to make sure that I have complete and ultimate coverage. Careflex Super. Now, I have your attention. Are there any questions? I have stunned you into silence. I have tried to do this at home for 30 something years. I have failed every day. There's no stun. Ah, there we go. Yes, sir. Pardon? That's up to the manufacturer. That's not up to me. The answer is no. There's too much. It, he asked if you could put three millimeter on the floor. It will bend. There's just too much. You would need perfection personified across there. Um, it would show everything. Yes, sir. It's a it's a modified siling. You could use a reg regular tiles too. You don't need to just use it with large thin tile. And and yeah, it's price wise, it's a little bit more. But the reality is. I'm carrying a bucket on a job. I'm not carrying a drill, an extension cord, a bucket of water, hoping that I mix it the right way, all of that stuff. I'm just, you know where this really comes in, like with other tiles outside of thin tiles, to me, is repairs. If I have to go in and repair one or two tiles in an existing building, I pop them out, I put this right on there, and I put the tile back in. I'm done. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about mixing it up. I don't have to worry about it oozing out the sides or anything. We're good? Ah, so this is Ultralight S2. Terraflex Super and Eco GPT. S2, S and Sam. D yes. As the ISO standard. All right, listen, you guys are awesome. Thank you for being part of this industry. I appreciate you guys. Go out and recruit. We need younger people to get involved in this business. They're out there. Go find them. It's up to us. Um, all of us need to do our part. We need to let people know this is an honorable trade. No building gets a CO until we put the floor in. They're waiting on us. Go out, do good work. Sign your work. Be proud of the work you do. Go out and mentor somebody. Make money. Be safe. Have a successful 2022. Thank you for attending. I appreciate you. Thank you, guys.